It's a great pleasure to have with us the management of Tube Investments of India Limited. From the management side, we are represented by Mr. Ram Kumar, who is the MD, and Mr. Mahindra Kumar, who is the CFO. I now hand over the floor to Mr. Ram Kumar. Over to you, sir. Um, thank you, Kashyap. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for taking time off to attend this conference. I shall quickly take you through the key highlights of uh, Q4 of 1718 uh, and the full year picture as well. I'm sure all of you have seen the results and the press release which we gave. I'll just tell you only the brief highlights. Our uh, revenue went up by 2% during the quarter. Um, except bicycles, all other businesses registered a good growth in the top line, uh, aided by the good uh, pickup in the auto sector. Before exceptional items, we grew by 18% in PBT. I shall cover the exceptional item in the end after I cover a few more points. Um, as you know, the company declared a dividend. And uh, during the year, overall, if you see, the revenue growth is 12% vis-a-vis uh, -vis last year and 8% growth in uh, PBT before exceptional items. The debt equity improved to 0.6 from 0.7, and uh, debt to EBITDA improved from 1.8 to 2.1. 2.1 to 1.8. No, sorry, uh, debt to EBITDA into, from 2.1 to 1.8. The interest costs uh, also reduced 22% year on year. Uh, coming to individual divisions, engineering division had a uh, good run, the highest ever sale uh, on the large diameter tubing, which everybody is interested, had a good growth, has been steadily ramping up quarter on quarter. We ended the year with a 57% growth in the core-drawn welded tube sales. Uh, we also had uh, marginal growth in the exports in the engineering division. There were several national international awards which we received. Overall, if you see, the revenue growth was year-on-year -year and for the quarter, 24%. PBIT grew by 20% in the year and 83% during Q4. Cycles has, uh, we've had a very difficult year. The few sil silver linings were our government's institutional volumes, a little higher at 10.8 lakhs against 8.2 lakhs last year. The performance cycling uh, group, which is the higher end of the bicycles, they grew by 29%. Otherwise, um, overall, uh, the volumes were uh, down. The market conditions were uh, not very favorable for everybody. There has also been a lot of price cutting, etc. We also, during this uh, period, decided to rationalize our location. So we had to shut down our operations in uh, Nastic. There has been an impact of this shutdown in the financials of uh, bicycles uh, division, which is around uh, 11, 12 crores, 12, 11, 11 crores uh, in terms of the compensation to the people who left us and also some inventory write-downs, etc. So that is further accentuated. This is a one-time item. It, is, it will not uh, repeat. Uh, the revenue overall for the division declined by 10%. We believe the market declined by 10 to 12 percent. Uh, there has been a lot of efforts during the year uh, to reduce the fixed costs, <clears throat> given that the volumes are uh, not uh, predictable. The impact of this reduction during the year, you will get the full year impact and further reduction because of the closure of the plant in the year 2018-19. Metal formed products had a good year. The two-wheeler industry grew by 16% with uh, scooters at 20% growth. Passenger vehicles also grew during this period. This helped us. The net revenue went up by 11% for the full year and 18 in Q4. PBIT grew by 16% for the full year and 43% for Q4. There was a good growth in the auto chains volume in the OE market and in the aftermarket. Um, fine blanking, which is a focus area for us, grew by 29%. Industrial chains also saw a moderate growth of 8%. Uh, the door frames, again, grew, uh, both for the full year and a good growth in Q4 of 13%. The coaches which we supply uh, had a good growth because there's been a lot of demand from the uh, government, the ICF, etc. Grew by 40%, both in Q4 and for the full year. 
we see a continuous growth going forward in the year 18-19 as well. Now, overall exports uh, of uh, TI went up by 3% from 343 crores to 349 crores. If we look at, uh, we already mentioned the, there was a reduction in finance charges. Coming to the exceptional item of uh, 25.25 crores, this pertains to two of our investments in our joint ventures. One pertains to TI Absolute, uh, where uh, we partnered with uh, person to promote high-end cycling, and uh, where food and beverages were served and cycling was also there for people to come in and uh, experience, try the cycles, and then buy them. This particular uh, venture has taken more time for us to move on in terms of uh, fully realizing the potential. While the turnover did grow during the year, but the initial investments and also the kind of money we had to spend to get more walk-ins, we had to spend more money in this than expected. So the, on, from a prudence, from a prudence point of view, we thought it is better that uh, we provide for a write-down in the investment we made. We're looking at rationalization of all these facilities and also looking at how to make it uh, tighter and uh, look at various options of uh, sales and marketing going forward. But um, from a balance sheet perspective, we've uh, not shown profit and we've had a lot of initial uh, pre-operative kind of expenses. Going by this, uh, it was thought as prudent to write down part, uh, write down this uh, investment. The other one was the venture we had for making the automotive dies. We had a good start last year, the first year of operation. We did have a good turnover. However, this business, again, we spent a lot of uh, money initially on design, uh, on development. Uh, that is, we had to we send people to our collaborators' place to get the training done. And there was a fair amount of money which was spent there. And last year being the first year of operation of this company, there was a learning curve which was operating. So we had extra costs in terms of the revenue which uh, we finally earned. Considering all this, we thought uh, it is also prudent uh, that we write down uh, the value of this uh, investment as well. Uh, going forward in this business, this business we have established ourselves as uh, good suppliers, though we took a little more time initially to supply the right quality. We've got some good names in our books. We have uh, also got some uh, some orders now. The business is also a little volatile in the sense that you get these orders in a bunch and there is a little working capital requirement. So going by this, we had uh, uh, thought that uh, it is better to look at an impairment uh, right now. These two are the amounts which we have uh, shown under uh, exceptional items, and these are of uh, uh, non-recurring nature. Coming to the subsidiaries, mainly talking about Shanti Gears had a good year. Fully, full year revenue growth was 16%, uh, and during the quarter it was 9%. The PPT grew by 16% for the whole year from 29 to 33 crores. The order uh, booking also improved during the year from the previous year by 12%. Uh, the business conditions seem to be pretty strong for this uh, business. Cedis, our subsidiary in uh, France, had a reasonably good year. The sales grew by 9% and there was a uh, reasonable improvement in the bottom line. Um, uh, there is no impact on us, for us, due to increase in effective tax rates, except in case of cycles in GST. Cycle business is taxed at 12% under GST, compared to 7% under the previous regime. Others are very close to what we are paying as VAT plus uh, excise duty. Broadly, this is the picture. Going forward, uh, we see uh, fairly good uh, growth in the auto sector. Order books are pretty strong and uh, the volumes are increasing uh, every month and uh, we are getting geared up. As you know, we are uh, we had invested an additional facility in Rajpura for our Q plant, and this will get commissioned uh, very soon. The trial production is uh, going on to meet the growing demand in the auto sector. 
uh, as far as uh, bicycle division is concerned, is going to be more of cost reductions and uh, also accepting the reality that the market is not going to grow and we are going to focus on profitable segments as well as cut down our costs drastically. I already mentioned that we started this process sometime last year. And it is on and there will be more aggressive cost reduction in order to look at even if the turnover comes down that we make the business profitable in terms of the profitability ratios and return on capital employed. In the case of uh, metal farming, dog as well because most of it is related to automotive. I think right now it's a question of how we get more from our existing capacity or look at capacity expansion wherever required. And on that basis, uh, I think we are getting ready to look at uh, the current year and the next couple of years, which we think will continue to be quite buoyant in the auto sector. So this is broadly what I have to say, and I should, I'll be very happy to take any questions you may have. Sure. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. We have the first question from the line of Sujit Jain from ASK Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, what explains the capital employed uh, coming down by 96 crores in engineering division YY? Oh, sorry, QOQ. That's the number is. We're talking about increase or decrease? Sir. Engineering division, the capital employed has come down from 329 crores to 233 crores. Uh, that is quarter and quarter, December to March quarter. That is cycles and access rates, 329 to 233. We're talking about cycles and access rates? I'll check my numbers. Uh, but if that is the case, what is the number in that region? Cycles and access rates, 329. Working capital was brought under control. We had high institutional uh, outstandings last time, hmm. which we brought down. Okay. And uh, in the two uh, JVs that you spoke about where uh, you've taken the write-off, uh, how yeah. much is the write-off in Cyclo Cafe division and what is the write-off in uh, Metal Sheet uh, JV? A split of 20 seconds. Oh, it's, uh, see, in, in the case of Cyclo Cafe, it is a fairly larger number, and uh, the die making, it is little less. Uh, I mean, we've not given the numbers, but we can give it to you offline whenever you want it. Okay, and what are the volumes for the quarter in bicycles, and if you can give a realization? For the, I believe that you have component uh, revenues also in the revenues of uh, bicycles. Spares, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you can give the realization, if you could, and the volumes. I want to know the value of sales? Value we have. Uh, you, can, yeah, you can give the value and volumes of bicycles. Yeah, well, well, you want in Q4 or whole year? Both. Okay. I'll give you the volume. Volume is value, I think, you know. Total cycles uh, Q4. Uh, huh? 618, yeah. Yeah, it's 6.2 lakh cycles for Q4, and for the full year it was 37. 37.6 lakhs. And what was the corresponding volume uh, YY for the base quarter? Yeah. So last year Q4. Huh? Last year Q4 was 10.3 lakhs. The full year was 39.5 lakhs. Okay. And so, uh, 
in the revenue of bicycle division um, so we basically wanted to know the realization per unit in bicycles or you can give the rough component uh, i mean uh, how the bicycles revenue is split between components and uh, you know bicycles any rough cut idea a percentage wise no, no. bicycles will be significant i can only tell you if you wanted to know that yeah. i already told you out of this we have sold uh, uh, 10.84 lakhs to the institutions and 8.22 lakhs was the corresponding figure of the previous year these will have a different realization and the trade will have a higher realization correct okay otherwise you can just uh, the components portion is not it is very significant yeah and when you say performance bikes uh, you know their sales increased 29% correct how much is that as a portion of uh, overall bike sales I mean, how big is the segment for us, and as well as the industry? Five percent. It's five percent. Okay. And could you give the volumes in the engineering division, and as well as the realization? Realization. There are multiple projects. I can give you the broad volume. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, the total uh, cubes uh, quantity we had done. Mm -hmm. For uh, you want for Q4 or uh, whole year you want. Just a second, I'll give you. total uh, the tonnage done of uh, tubes was 2.2 uh, 2.2 lakh uh, tons as compared to 1.85 lakh tons last year 1.85 okay in the case of strips we did uh, 60000 tons as against 56000 last year sorry 60 against 56 last year Correct. Okay, and uh, I mean just to come come back to the bicycles division, uh, we yeah. closed one division in North, put out the Rajapura plant, and now we've closed the Nashik division. So, what is the uh, nameplate capacity of the division? Yeah. Actually, we closed uh, Rajapura is a new plant. We yeah. closed the plant at Noida, which is in uh, which is in Noida. Rajapura is in Rajapura is a new plant, and uh, Nashik is what we have closed now. The name plate capacity is something like uh, three and a half to four lakhs per month. Let's so, say, depending on the volume. So four point eight to five million cycles is what we can produce annually. Is that the correct understanding? Correct, correct, correct. You are right. You are right. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thanks. I'll come back and look you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on their touchtone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Mr. Kashyap Pujara from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, Mr. Ram Kumar, I would like to uh, understand uh, what would be, uh, you know, given that you mentioned that the focus of cycles division would be to improve profitability by cost rationalisation on a lower top line base as well. Now, given that, would it imply that we will be shrinking our uh you know supplies to the government because that the gross margin per cycle there would be reasonably lower than the one we do in trade and in specials and performance so uh you know would that be the right strategy going forward because that would also accompany lower working capital uh, in the same segment driving rocs up uh, what uh, i meant is within the trade we don't intend walking out of the institutional business because apart from uh, having volume it also gives us visibility in the respective markets uh, being a significant volume we would like our uh, customers to know our brand in those parts of uh, the country we will continue with the government sales institutional sale what i meant is since uh, we are focusing on profitability we are looking at our complete models 
and rationalize and reduce the number of uh, models, make it less rather than carry too much variety, because that also adds to the cost, apart from overall reduction in fixed costs. This is what I meant. Uh, I said we will not chase volumes only, we will also look at profits. Probably I, what I said was not clear. We are definitely looking at uh, institutional sales going forward. So, in, given that context, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, the way I see it is that, you know, on the current top line base, there are a lot of areas, uh, you know, uh, where we have, uh, you know, operating leverage drivers. Like, uh, even if the top line of the company, uh, you know, is at 4,500 or 5,000 crore, uh, we have uh, cycles which historically has been at 5% margins, currently at a lower point. And you are saying that margins can improve there. Within engineering also, large dia still has room to improve. Uh, metal forming, you know, the car door frames and the coaches business is just, uh, you know, doing better incrementally. So how do I look at operating leverage within uh, tube investments? Could you, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, let us know where all are the levers we have uh, for improving margins on the similar kind of a top line base? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the case of uh, bicycles, you already said, of course, uh, the market is an issue, but we have enough capacity. In tubes, uh, we just set up a plant which is being commissioned, right? As that ramps up, there won't be any further capex and other things required, but the revenue will start flowing during the year 2018-19 onwards. In the case of uh, fine, blanking. fine blanking, also, uh, the volumes are increasing and we have made some expansion in the existing location, which means uh, there is an operating leverage. We don't have to hugely increase the manpower cost. And uh, large diameter tubing, uh, for those people who are interested, uh, we uh, came to a break-even on PBIT uh, basis on Q4 and substantially reduced the losses from the previous year. Uh, it will uh, definitely becoming PBT positive. Plus, we are also looking at uh, products with a higher margin, with a little higher quality requirement. We have got qualified by some of the customers. This should also help us to improve the uh, margin. In the case of uh, chains, yes, we have some room to definitely increase without further investment given the market uh, situation. The investments we have already made, that will also give us... Uh, uh, higher uh, operating margin. So these are broadly the reasons why uh, our margin should uh, get better. So, uh, and on the cycles front, even if the top line uh, comes off a bit, we would we can still expect historical 4-5% margins that we've reported close to 5% margins to come back? Yes, that is the, uh, that is the goal. Maybe it will happen over two years, if not uh, the first year itself. Sure. And uh, lastly, just one question before I get back in the queue, would be that uh, uh, given that most of the places uh, you mentioned that, you know, that we've already spent uh, money and it's now essentially waiting for growth. So what is the kind of capex that uh, we would look at given that most capex is already behind us? No, it is only further level of expansion for metal forming, uh, for uh, for uh, fine blanking, and for uh, tubes. Tubes also, we have plans for more growth in exports, and uh, we already see that what you've done in Rashtra, we need to increase the capacity given the current market uh, trend. So the capex being planned will be in the range of 150 to 200 crores. 150 to 200 crores. Sure. Okay, I'll get back in the queue. Raymond, you can take the next question, please. Sure, thank you. Uh, before we take the next question, a reminder once again to our participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. Next question is from Vipul Shah from Sumangal Investments. Please go ahead. Sir, would you repeat uh, those uh, <coughs> engineering division figures? Were it for the quarter or it were for the year? No, no, for the full year, I told you, the total tonnage of tubes we did was 2.1, 2.2 lakh tons current year as against 1.85 lakh tons last year, 185,000. In the case of strips, we did 60,000 tons for the whole year against 56,000 last year. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to ask a question at this time may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. 
we have a follow-up question from the line of uh, Krasha Pujara from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, just uh, one bookkeeping question. Uh, what is my uh, borrowing level uh, at the standalone level at the end of the year? Because I think uh, there is some uh, borrowing even sitting in the other financial liabilities as well. So if you can just give the total borrowing. It was about 687 crores. 687 crores. Okay. We brought, okay. brought it down by about 75 crores compared to last year. Sure. Sure. And given, you know, uh, you know, over the next three years, if I want to just crystal gaze on uh, Tube, uh, you know, how do you, uh, how do we actually look at uh, lower, you know, reducing debt from uh, here? Because we will have 150 crores of ongoing capex on a normalized basis. So how do we actually end up, you know, bringing the debt down uh, over the years? Any, you know, particular thoughts that you can share that? And also a sustainable level of growth that you could actually uh, look at on the on the top line or across segments, whatever you could share. Yeah, if you really see our cash flows, we typically generate about uh, 300 crores cash from operations. Uh, so if we are able to limit our capex to 150 to 200 crores, so that should actually help us. And we are also trying to look at NWC improvements also. So all that should actually enable us to bring down the debt in the coming years. Sure. And on, uh, you know, your sense on overall top line growth that one can look at across uh, segments of cycle, you mentioned that one should prepare for flat or lower top line. No, 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 I think uh, I would not like you, anybody to belabor the point that we want to top the value in cycles. I only meant that. Uh, I think uh, I wanted to emphasize profitability rather than Sales value alone. It is quite possible sales value will also go up. So I don't want to say we would like to continue to be uh, having a higher market share in our trade segment. Government segment is based on tender. I can't predict. At least we'll have the same volume, I think, next year. So what I meant to say is the management is giving adequate attention to profitability rather than just chasing numbers is the take home. Not to say that next year we want to drop the sales value and all that. You know, we don't want to do that. So overall, if you see cycles, definitely we are planning for a growth. I don't want to say that, but as you know, we don't give any outlook as such for the future. But given that the market conditions in auto sector is good, I think we'll continue to have a good growth as it has been in the last six months. Sure. Fair enough. Point well taken, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Raymond, can you just uh, ask for more questions? Sure. Before we take the next question, a reminder once again to our participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. Uh, the next question is from the line of Siddharth Bhattacharya from Suyash Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, I just wanted to ask uh, if you could sort of uh, give us the breakup of the CW and ERW volumes that you've done. I'm sorry if I'm repeating the question again. Normally, for competitive reasons, we are not in a position to do this. But you can say bulk of the growth is coming in CDW. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. uh, also within the uh, uh, segments, uh, where is the growth actually coming from? I mean, exports or the domestic uh, sector per se for both? See, this year, as you have reported, finally it is domestic. No? Export uh, is only a marginal increase uh, in the value. Okay, and uh, if you could also help me understand uh, in terms of price realizations, what is the trend that we are seeing without actually giving uh, actual prices? Uh, are they sort price of price realization okay? is? Uh, you mean in CDW versus ERW? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, CDW is higher because there is no ERW is the basis on which uh, we get uh, CDW. So definitely CDW has got a better pricing uh, in that sense. And the pricing trend within the CW segment over the last, let's say, three, four, five years? Uh, pricing however, trend, see, what happens, as you know, in automotive, uh, the pricing depends to a large extent on the raw material costs. Correct. That is the kind of thing which the OEMs and the tier one suppliers are willing to uh, compensate us. Mm -hmm. So you would see in the last six months to one year, the steel prices have gone up. So definitely the end prices are also higher, but it doesn't mean that all of it is... Uh, directly profit. The profit has to come from more efficiency, yield improvement and stuff like that. And okay. when the prices go down, let's say steel prices go down, I hope it does, 
then we'll have to pass on that uh, reduction also. Okay. So the pricing will always be in line with the largely the commodity price uh, movement. Okay. Okay. Hmm. And uh, so finally, I just also read somewhere that a lot of uh, the components within, uh, let's say, a four-wheeler are hmm. uh, getting converted into tubular sort of uh, component, which is based on tubes. So would uh -huh. that be a fair uh, sort of a judgment? that more and more components would be more of uh, tubular based in the future? There has been some conversion. I am not aware of this lot of components. Mm -hmm. There are some rods which are made into tubes. We have participated in many of these programs in helping people to convert uh, the rods and other things into tubes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, is, it is on. I am not able to say it is lot or not, but it is part of our growth uh, and uh, new product development. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much sir, for answering my question. Uh, Kashyap, uh, we brought down that by 89 crores to be precise. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Vikash Sharma from Entras Family Office. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Hello? Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, hi, sir. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, just yeah. wanted to know uh, about your subsidiary Shanti Gears. Uh, we spoke that the business conditions are improving, but uh -huh. our operating profit margin in Shanti Gear in the latest quarter announcement was the lowest in past yeah. seven to eight quarters. So just yeah, wanted yeah. your comments. So that means our revenues are increasing, but is that a problem with our product mix or is that a problem? I was, it's, a, it's a product mix of the quarter. Your good question. See, actually, I would say, yeah, you're right. Uh, I won't say that it's going to be the trend going forward. Okay. Okay. The year average will be more representative. Okay. So, uh, the year average is always around 17 to 20 percent. Will that be near that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. Okay. So, sir, uh, also I have one more request. In order to uh, know more about our subsidiary Shanti Gears, there is no investor yeah. presentation available. There is no communication where the investors can reach out to the company. So, what will be the best mode to know more about this company? Oh, How can fine, I reach uh, there? Point is taken. I think we will yeah. start with the investor presentation. Okay. Right? And then we will decide, uh, see, the investor call we take here. If you have any questions, we will be able to answer. But we will definitely start with the investor presentation and then we will come back by the first quarter whether we should have a separate uh, call for them or you can ask your questions in this call. We will be able to answer. There is no problem. Okay, sir. So, the next question again on Shanti Gears only. So, uh, which uh, clients from which industry have been uh, showing this kind of good momentum, sir, in terms of order booking? So, majority of the order book is coming from which sector for your gear and gear products? Um, actually, there are uh, overall improvement is there, but you can say off-road vehicles is improved. Our business and service is also gone up. Okay. And uh, there's been some improvement in steel sector. Okay. Broadly, I would say, plus other general engineering industries. Okay. So, sir, one more question. Which product has a higher margin, whether it will be a standard or a custom built in the Shanti case? Naturally, custom built is uh, more profitable. So basically in Q4, we had sold more of standard than custom builds. Yeah, sometimes tender based, you know, you take the order at a little lower price for a strategic reason, etc. So all told, uh, there's been a mix uh, impact. So presently, the order book which we have in Shanti is how much of that is tender book, sir? I I can, I can know where you are getting at. I can tell you that uh, Q4 is, is not going to be representative of the next year, full year in terms of margin. It will be the full year of 2017-18, as I mentioned. Okay, sir. Understood. No problem. I w uh, would be grateful if you can uh, fulfill the commitment of this Q1 onwards presentations on Santi Gear. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We will definitely. Ready. Definitely we will do. No problem. Okay, Done. sir. Done. Done. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gagan Tareja from Kotak Investment Advisory. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. First question pertaining to your uh, Cyclo Cafe, uh, you, you took some write downs. Is it possible to understand uh, at a segmental level uh, 
what could be you know the turnover and the loss uh, contribution from the cyclo cafe venture and and the capital employed uh, post the right now see right now uh, it is not included in the, in the segmental thing the cycle turnover and the results we reported does not include this impairment so we have shown it below the line that's one thing second is i would request you all to give us some time because uh, there is a on all i mean a couple of these things uh, joint venture partners are also involved so we need to take them into confidence in terms of the kind of uh, you know information we can give on all that so please hold on for some time then we'll be able to give you everything but from a accounting and a prudence perspective we we've taken from a point of view of abundant caution we said we might as well do this so should things look up it's going to be only a plus for us Okay. better than expected now yeah, okay. yeah. export growth for the year was as you said marginal but yeah. you, you you have been indicating that you, you it, it it could be a significant growth driver for yeah. you in in the future uh, yeah. so just just wanted to understand uh, your outlook for for exports uh, both near and mid term one and secondly also you know Uh, you now you would have had some time to understand the impact of the us uh, import duties also uh, uh, if you could you know take that also as a factor into consideration and give give some idea of you know how we should think of exports so uh, no the uh, thank you for the question Yes, I think uh, the duty uh, levied by the recent in the U.S. government, plus uh, earlier they also had some investigation on countervailing and uh, anti-dumping on many companies, not only from India but also from China, Europe, and all that. All have had a very dampening effect. So as our U.S. exports was doing well, posting along this happened. So that has definitely reduced the potential sales we could have done during the year 2017-18 so we are not looking at us much as far as 2018-19 is concerned but we are simultaneously developing other markets where we have seen traction for our products so the momentum which we gained in the previous year would have continued had uh, this us uh, thing had not happened so so we believe uh, uh the new markets we are now looking at will start getting in this year and again we'll see a good growth in the year 2019-20 how much would us contribute to your exports um uh, it's around uh, 100 crores 100 crores yeah okay this this you you believe is 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 difficult to grow given given the current yeah uh, it's not it's not going to happen as we plan now unless there is some change in the regulation so we are first of all have to compensate for this 100 crores now which we are doing here and so, so the, uh, in the base case this 100 crores might further come down uh, in the coming year yeah 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 okay but we have got options to fill up this and then okay. have a marginal growth then on top of it we have to grow to show a higher growth than current base okay okay and uh, i mean uh, given given uh, that that steel prices have moved up uh, i do not know how the price renegotiation how many times or how does it happen between you and the oems but uh, with the current outlook on steel i mean whatever it is for you uh, 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 would would the uh, improvements that you could see coming off uh, from economies of scale in some of your uh, in some of your businesses and cost rationalization in some of the other businesses would would they be would they be uh, net net would you still have a positive impact at the operating level or you think that you know the gross margin erosion because of steel prices would eat into some of these cost efficiencies that you would be able to build No, I think we've just been able to manage uh, to hold on to the margins, not affected by the steel price uh, increases and the recoveries which we make from the customers. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope the steel prices come down. That will be good for us. Okay. I wish the steel companies are listening also. Okay. Okay. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder once again to our participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from Vipul Shah from Sumangal Investments. Please go ahead. So, what is the capacity in the cube division? And after this expansion, what will be the ultimate capacity? I think uh, with the new division, our capacity utilization will be something like 80-85%. Yeah. Okay, but what will be the installed capacity after this expansion? Uh, yeah, uh, we would like to work out uh, the thing we, can, we, should, we should be able to give it after the plant stabilizes, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. Next question is from Sunny Agarwal from PNB. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, just would like to know what is the order book uh, as of uh, 4Q for Shanti here and what was the order inflow during the last quarter? We have been getting uh, 20 crore plus uh, outstanding order book is around 130 crores. Okay. Better than last year, same time. Okay. okay. And uh, how has been the order inflow during FID? Q4? Yeah. Q4 or the full year you're asking? Uh, for full year, sir. Yeah. yeah, full year I mentioned that the order booking was 237 crores. Okay, 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 sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. That was the last question. As there are no further questions, I'd like to hand the conference back to Mr. Kashyap Pujara for closing comments. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you to Mr. Ramkumar and Mr. Mahendra Kumar for being there on the call today and answering all the questions.